Kyle, um, uh, to echo a comment my uh, Tim likes to say a lot on the show, and he means it, and I mean it, it's easy to come on when things are going well. I can imagine uh, how, how raw the emotions still are. So thank you for coming on today, Kyle. We appreciate it. No worries. I, I often will say to our people here and, and our own family that exactly that, but it, and it goes along with the media and press of doing this job that you can't only show up to it when you've won or when you're winning. It's, uh, it's equally as important uh, when things are, uh, are not as planned to, to be out in front and center and, and uh, taking the, the heat and the bullets that are, that are warranted. So thank you for having me. Um, first, first question, we'll, we'll dive into the nuts and bolts of your team here in a second, obviously big picture though, what you just experienced in that bubble, what the league put together, the organization in the bubble, the, the fact that all those tests were coming back negative and the feeling to eventually go home. What, what was that like? Um, once we were in, it, it really kind of flew by and we were, we were only there for two weeks, but it, it wasn't, um, it, it was done so well. Like the hotel was very nice. The meals were, were great. Um, and, and just the way that your days were, were so like, they had to be so structured. So your testing time, your bus time, how long you could be at the rink when you were at the rink versus normal. Um, like some days your practices were at, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, other days they were at three or four. Uh, and the days where they were at three or four really made the day much different than any day we normally face where you're at the rink very early and you're, and the players are gone by one and, um, and the staff has gone by, you know, three or four after being there for since five or six in the coach's case. So, uh, they were much different days and I think it, it flew by, especially once the series started, uh, it really flew by, um, with playing every other day and then back to back days and three and four. But I think the way that the NHL did it and, and what you know, we were only at the Royal York, but what their staff did there and, and combined with the staff here at the rink, it was, uh, it was one thing to hear about it, but to live it, they, they did such an amazing job with, with everything and uh, experience that you'll never forget. Unfortunately, we wish the we were there a bit longer in the, and we were exiting with, um, with better feelings, but nonetheless. Kyle Dubas, at least GM joining us here. So obviously, as you're mentioning, coming up short, uh, first round qualifying round, it, it's not what you hope for in your first couple of years as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. What do you think that you guys need to do and maybe be better at in order to fill your own or fulfill your own expectations? Well, I think that it would be great, um, Tim, if if our progress was was a straight line, and you know we we went uh, year after year taking one you know putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to make progress to, to where we ultimately want to go. But whether it's with our team or, or or others in in our sport or different sports, it's it's often not that way. And and I understand and get that. Um, People are very critical of us right now, and rightfully so. I mean, we've we've been in positions now the last three seasons where we had a game seven at Boston, we lost. We had game six and seven last year against Boston, we lost. And then we had uh, game five here against Columbus, and we lost. Um, and it, we're in a, a market that's extremely passionate, um, but that has millions of people uh, following each and everything we do every day. And thus, there's a there's a strong appetite for uh, media and all of those things that you can you can say that they're difficult when um, uh, when things are tough because the pressure comes, the heat comes. But there, that's part of the thing that gives us the resources we have. It allows us to be such a special place to, to live and play when things are going so well. Uh, so I don't think you can condemn them at this point. Um, but the reality is I, I understand why people are disappointed in us and we're disappointed in ourselves as well. We firmly believe that we had a lot better to offer and, and that we do moving forward. And I think the, the key thing right now is not to overreact and make any decisions now that don't need to be made until we get into the off season. And we have our discussions with, uh, with different teams um, and, and see where, where they're looking to go with their clubs, see if there's a fit uh, with some of the free agents that will come available and, and some of the trading partners about how we can continue to mold our club to where we want to where we want to get it to. And I think our past trades uh, that we've made here um, in the last two years certainly give a, a strong indication of where we would look to go with that. Hmm. Kyle Dubas, Leafs GM here on Tim and Sid. So what, I mean, it's impossible to say because we don't, we don't even know when technically your off season is going to begin here, Kyle, but mm-hmm. um if you're going to make changes, where are the changes? Where does this team have to be better? Well, I think, you know, the, the one area is, and, and I think Sheldon's talked about it. I talked about it before we went in, Sid, and, and I, I think all three of us, Shani, myself, and Sheldon, 
talked about it today is it's, it's what everybody knows because everybody's watched it for the last two years. It's in, in games where and in series where we have chances to, uh, to close the series down. So in game three against Columbus, we're up three, nothing. And they come back and tie the game and we lose in overtime. And then in game five against Columbus, just not being able to convert on our chances. And, and, you know, we have to stop, uh, putting ourselves in those, you know, in those deciding games, not that we don't want to be comfortable in them, but when we have chances to take control and end a series much earlier. So whether that's game six against Boston last year or finishing off Boston and seven the year before our, my, our mentality has to, um, has to shift and we have to have that, uh, that instinct to finish off the opponent when we've got them against the ropes and we haven't shown that yet. Now, is that a maturity thing? Is it a personnel thing? It's probably a little bit of both. And so we'll continue to, um, uh, we'll continue to look at all of those aspects as we break it all down, but we're not going to sit still and, and uh, likely just say, this is fine. And we're going to give it another go and, and uh, just expect that it's going to be different next time. We're going to do a deep dive on where we're at and, and um, how we can improve in that, in that realm, whether it's with, with what we're doing in, in practice and games and preparation and with our personnel, whether there, there are different guys that we can bring in that can help us uh, achieve what we want to achieve. And, and we won't, uh, we won't leave anything unturned. I understand that you're talking about finish here, and there are some, including me, who have questioned whether everyone is willing to do what it takes uh, to win when it matters most. That that perhaps in this year, that will won over skill in the qualifying round, that there needs to be more sacrifice as a group to be harder to play against. Uh, were you, Sheldon and Brendan Shanahan, happy with the effort? Like, Do you feel like your guys played hard enough, sacrificed enough, to win in the Stanley cup playoffs. I thought that we, I thought that we played hard in the series. Um, Tim, I thought we could certainly, uh, I thought where we, where we got away from what we needed to do. And if I could go to one instance, I thought in game one, we were a little bit lax, whether it was the environment or, or whatever it was, um, and got back on our heels. Then I thought we responded great in game two and played one of our better games where, where I would really key in on if I wanted to focus on exactly what you're referencing is game three. So we take the lead three, nothing. And, you know, Sheldon afterwards didn't think we played great. I, I would, I would agree with him, but we were still in the lead three, nothing. And at that point, I think, you know, you can point to whatever you want, but, you know, there's instances within that game where we're, whether it's focus or mindset, we just weren't locked in to where we needed to be. So mistakes cost us on, on, uh, I would, their first goal, I would, I would kind of throw aside, but their second and third to tie the game where at those moments when you need to check down and play a certain way, um, you know, we, we need to look at that moment as a strong teaching point, similar to last year against Boston in game six, after we took the lead against them here at home with the chance to win where, where we have to take those steps. Now that's happened with two different head coaches, but with a lot of the same, players and so there needs to be some introspection amongst everybody here but that's i mean i I thought our our effort level was good i thought we blocked shots i I didn't think it was a series where they physically uh ran us over i thought we gave it back uh, just as well as 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 they tried to give it to us um though some may disagree with that Uh, i thought in, in the end you know our penalty kill was was excellent and that didn't allow a goal the entire time and really not many chances and I, I think that speaks to the effort and commitment on that side of it i think you know it's it's continuing to stick with it when when we're at that point where we have someone on the ropes doing what we need to do to finish them off Kyle Dubas Leafs GM here on Tim and Sid Kyle you you you've gotten to this point in your career for a reason you have a way of thinking about this game that you trust and i respect that um if next year plays out like the previous four, do you got to rethink some things? Uh, I think I rethink, I think, you know, it, it, before getting to that point, uh, said, I, I don't, I, I, I certainly have certain things that I value, but I, I'm, I don't, I wouldn't consider myself to be a, a really um, stubborn person on it. I, I always think that, um, especially for me, uh, I'm, I don't have, um, this is only my, my second at the end of my second year, going to my third year in this position. And I, I have it'll be my, just my seventh year in the NHL. So it's not a, um, it's not a huge amount of, um, 
uh, of experience, relatively speaking. So uh, I, I think, and even no matter how long I'm able to do this, uh, I never want to be somebody that's transfixed in, in their thinking and never want our organization to be there. I think we've, we've, we've built our team with, with based around, you know, very high draft picks with very talented people. And now we're trying to fill out the, the rest of it to, to allow our talent to shine through at those key moments, like, like Tim's question alluded to. Um, but I, I don't think that it will wait for another year. I think, you know, starting, Right now, we'll continue to we'll, we'll start to evaluate where we're at, where we might have gone wrong, and and adapt so that we're avoiding this exact question uh, next year. I, I would I would hate I think it would be a, a disservice for me to the organization to to not uh, to not evaluate that now rather than to wait a, a whole other year. Um, and and uh, if we're in the same spot next year after doing the same thing, I think that'd be a really uh, strong condemnation of the job that, that I had done. So um, I, I'm aware of that. And, and I look at it as my, um, the onus is on me solely to, to uh, ask those questions of myself and, and, uh, and try to correct um, the various things that have led us to, to fall short of our potential. Kyle Dubas, GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs joining us here on Tim and Sid. I was quickly, Kyle, going to uh, Google evolve quotes and then i figured we all know enough evolve quotes that i don't have to read one of them from google um but you said earlier that you believe that the trades and and you can correct me if i'm wrong but you said the trades that we made indicated maybe where we want to go um there's been so much talk and you're technologically savvy you know what people are talking about about heavy hockey and heavy hockey winning in each of the last two seasons i think you can look up and see tampa making a concerted effort to kind of go a little more that way while still maintaining their skill the one constant criticism of this team is that they're not tough enough they aren't heavy enough are are you starting to agree with that a little more having gotten a little more of a sample size from the nhl's postseason um, I, I think it'll be interesting how it all how it all goes. I, I think it's always been something, whether it was, you know, um, Muzzin or, or Clifford this year, uh, Tim, that that we've sort of keyed in on. I, I think we just at, at these time at this time of the year, and, and we just lived it with the way that Columbus plays. And credit to them, They're, they've got a whole group that is that is really bought into that. And I think it was on display last night against the, the Tampa team that you mentioned. Uh, it's quite a, they had 40 hours after our game, and then they get into a, a marathon for six hours and they're still scratching and clawing the, the whole way. Um, you know, but from, from our end of it, you know, it's, it's that it's finding that perfect combination where you don't want to sacrifice in the offense. And I think the defensive side, there's, there's a lot of skill that comes uh, with defense. I know it's seen as more of a mindset type thing, but defense takes skill as well uh, in technique and, and talent that, are, that, it, that it requires, but there also is a strong uh, internal part of that and, and the willingness and want to do it. And, um, you know, I think that often gets discussed as a toughness or a grit. And, and we, all, we want to develop that amongst our own guys. But if we can also find it elsewhere, um, as we've shown, that's, that's something that I, I th- we, we do strongly value. Um, and uh, our, our willingness to acquire it, I think, has shown that. And it's, it's not going to stop uh, now. Uh, but the, the one thing I, would, I will caution against is that, you know, we have often been weary of, of sort of um, shifting your strategy to whatever the previous cup winner was uh was about and so um though you know i think we have to find our own way and, and stick with it um and continue to adapt it and add to it to the pieces that we need i get it kyle dubas here on tim and sid leafs gm um so sunday happens kyle and i don't, I don't know how much social media you took in but uh i i obviously was on it and and leaf leafs nation did what leafs nation did they were upset and and I saw some names tossed around about this person can't be back. Kyle needs to move that person. Blah blah. I, I saw Mitch Marner's name come up, and Tim brought it up yesterday. I almost fell off my chair when I read that. Now, now to be fair, and Mitch even said this today, he was not engaged at all in Game One. And for for the money and the cap room you allot him, that is unacceptable for you, Sheldon, and the franchise. I think we can all agree on that. But you're not trading Mitch, right? Like, let's just settle this now for anyone listening, anyone watching. Like that. That's an untouchable for you. Would you? Would you not say? I I don't know where that. I mean, I'm I'm aware of it because it's. I've been asked about it today. Uh, Sid, I don't know where it came from, um, and and where the where the negativity towards Mitch comes from. But if we're if we're going to win here and we're going to have success here, uh, Mitch Marner, his talent being being one thing, but who he is as a person uh, being the other part is going to be pivotal to us winning. 
And I think the um, the dumbest thing we could do is irrationally. I mean, we're, we're talking about a player who still had almost 70 points in just under 60 games, and which would put him over a full year again to to pass 90 points. Um, and he's 23 years old. It, I think it would be uh, stupid on my part and crazy, uh, not only for what he does uh, on the ice and his talent level, how hard he plays, the fact that he plays in every situation for our team and against the other team's best players and produces at a high clip. Um, but probably just as importantly, which is, which is amazing to say because of his talent, but what he brings to the group off the ice. So um, his uh, energy, his spirit, um, the work that he does in the community, um, which is incredible. And he was our nominee for the, uh, the King Clancy award, which, which we don't take lightly here. And, he, you know, it was a hands down that he was going to be our nominee because of the amount of stuff that he does in the community. He's a local player that's come up uh, with our organization and been an extremely uh, productive player for us. Uh, and especially given his age, I think he's only going to continue to get better. And I think this criticism that he's taking now um, will be made to look uh, very ridiculous um, next year and every year beyond, because I don't think it's warranted now. And uh, with regards to us moving Mitch Marner, um, it's not going to happen. Do you think that his contract puts unreal expectations on him? Um, that I, I, sh- I was just previously asked that, uh, Tim. I, yeah. I don't know, but I, I don't. I mean, I think yeah, I, I had a look at it after the the previous interview, and you know, I get that there are players that that people say are are comparables to him that um, that sign for less. And my response was that you know, two of the three players brought up signed for three years and not the six that Mitch gave. And I think in, in, in our, in, in the way the economics work, the more years that you give a team, um, um, certainly at, as a restricted free agent, the more money you're going to get uh, right. versus a bridge deal. So there were two players in particular mentioned and Mitch outproduced them during the season and, and significantly less games. Um, and then there was the other player that was mentioned. I don't want to get into the names of it because right. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but you know, Mitch outproduced that player signed a long-term deal for a little bit less, a uh, million and a half less or whatever it is by 20 seven points or something like that. So I think that um, if, if that's the way that people want to look at it, that's fine. But the salary cap and where we're at is not our, not uh, it, that's my responsibility to dance around. And I, I think that this contract and Austin's and, and the rest, like we're going to get full value from them. I have no doubt right. about that. So if that's what has got people all whipped up, then I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for them, but uh, Mitch Marner is a player that's that's going to have you know a great career here uh, as a Toronto Maple Leaf, and if he just carries on the way that he started, uh, he'll end up as as being one of the the top players in our franchise. I know we're getting tight here on time, but the natural follow from me then is obviously a global pandemic has made this even tougher. But do you believe that a team can win it all with four forwards making forty point five million on a near eighty million dollar cap? Yeah, I, I think the, I mean, the, the cap is going to be the same this year. And obviously I think we, I'm not going to dance around it. I think that, that we, we weren't expect, we, we, we often planned and Brandon Pridham here does a great job of always keeping that in check and playing out all the different scenarios. So the way, when, when we did all the deals, we, we, of course were, you know, one of the things you're hoping for is that the cap goes up and that you give yourself a little bit more room, but if the cap doesn't go up or it remains stagnant or they, or they placed a, a slowing growth on it, like basketball had would, would we, you know, the, their key question was, are these deals going to be worth it? Are they going to be valuable? And uh, I think for all of them, we, we felt that unequivocally that they were, and so that they were no problem. And, and now the, now the challenge is that with the, with, we know the salary cap is going to be staying uh, low and it's just the, the pressure is going to come to me to uh, be able to, you know, basically operate with the rest of the space and, uh, and, and maximize the efficiency of, of the roster. Right. So uh, I, I understand that the, the questions that come with that, I understand the concerns of the fans and the media, but um, I think that will, that will ultimately be what, how uh, my time here is defined is, is how, you know, those players are all going to produce and they're all going to be great players for us. It's can, uh, can we uh, do the dance around the edges of the roster that can get to, that can get us to where we want to go. And uh, I, I fully uh, accept that and understand that that responsibility and um, we'll be working at it every day here until they let us back to play to, to make sure we're in a good spot. And, and Kyle, last one from me. 
considering what the cap is going to look like the next couple of years and, and the, the lack of movement, can you get your blue line to where you want it to be um, with that cap where it is? Is it, is it dollar in, dollar out for your organization? Like how, I mean, because the blue line's an issue as well at times. Yeah, I, I think, well, I mean, with where we're at, uh, Sid, I, I would say that we, we have to be better everywhere, right? And, and uh, we, we will always, as long as we're uh, having any of these calls and, and the result hasn't been us winning the Stanley Cup, I, I think we'll, we'll always be looking at everything for where we can improve. And I know that um, that the defense gets a lot of the discussion. I, I think we've got you know, some, some excellent pieces there that are, that are proven guys and, and Riley and, and Muzzin. We've had a real strong year from Hall, which we think he'll just continue to improve. And then we've got sort of the, the collection of, of younger guys there in, in Dermot, Sandy, and Lilligren that, uh, that we need to continue to take steps. And, and uh, then we have the UFAs. Um, so, you know, there, there is some space there. Uh, we need to, we'll, we'll investigate everything that's available to improve the group in any position uh, by a trade or free agency. And I think that the major benefit is that um, that if there is something that fits and it's not a dollar in, dollar out scenario, I think the, the contracts that we have um, up front um, will we'll certainly carry value in the league, even despite the uh, the economic situation, whether it's budgetary or, or salary cap wise. And um, so we'll, we'd, we'd be able to create space if, if we felt there was a, a tangible upgrade that can help the team. And myself and Sheldon will, will get to work on looking at all those options as the, the conversations with other GMs pick up here at the end of the week and into next week and all through the summer and fall. Uh, obviously, uh, August 12th, uh, cleanup day, answer to the media, more importantly, answer to the fans. Uh, during a global pandemic wasn't the way anyone envisioned this thing going. So I'll reiterate what Sid said off the top. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Appreciate the effort and the will to get this all in. Thanks. Oh, perfect, guys. Thanks for having me and appreciate your questions. And we'll look forward to uh, talking again soon.